has been frustrated by what it sees as Mr. Assad's arrogance and, at least until recently, his unwillingness to bend to Russia's wishes on issues like jump-starting peace talks in Moscow this year and freeing dissidents who might play a role in the political uh, so, uh, solution. So we get Dmitry Trenin of the Carnegie Moscow Center, great uh, source for the uh, true depiction of the Russian uh, government. Uh, and we get a couple of other of, of these people, uh, similar kinds of uh, think tankers. Uh, one long-serving Western diplomat, unnamed, says there's not much chemistry in the Russia uh, to uh, Assad uh, relation, right? So um, it's just, this is all just whining and sour grapes. And then when we get to the State Department, it's even worse. The State Department says, we don't like the fact that there was a red carpet treatment for, for Assad. The red carpet treatment then becomes uh, the headline. Well, my God, this is really, really pathetic, right? Aren't we scraping the bottom of the barrel uh, with the State Department uh, spokesman whining on in this form. Now, despite this, though, we have a couple of positive things. Uh, in the background, we've got the U.S., the Pentagon, in effect, right, or CENTCOM, the United States Central Command, under General Lloyd Austin. And we've seen that Austin has had his ups and downs, but uh, in the past month or so, Austin has come down against a no-fly zone, against a safe haven for moderate terrorists in the north of Syria. Uh, he was able to reach uh, an understanding with his Russian counterparts, which is a protocol, an agreement between the United States and Russian defense ministries, I guess you could say, which says, in effect, these are the rules of the road. This is sort of the guideline for air traffic control over Syria so that we don't get incidents. We don't have near misses in the air. We don't have people, uh, reconnaissance planes, checking out some aircraft, and the aircraft gets nervous, and then something starts to go off. Uh, Secre Air Force Secretary Deborah James says it's a recognition we don't want incidents in the air. Okay, good. We'll be back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio, Webster Tarpney in Washington, D.C. So we're looking at this uh, positive sign, right? Sort of uh, understated, but uh, substantive. Uh, and that is the... The arrangement, the deal, the uh, memorandum, which has been signed between the U.S. military and the Russian military to avoid problems in Syria. And again, as the Secretary of the Air Force, Deborah James, that's se several layers down from the Secretary of Defense, it's a recognition that we don't want incidents in the air. Now, of course, everybody here goes into CYA mode. Uh, we're not endorsing Russia. We don't like what they're doing. They're not being honest, blah, blah, blah. But then uh, there is a deal inked. So that's uh, highly interesting. According to USA Today, the agreement with Russia includes protocols for flying safely over battlefields in Syria and indicates dedicated frequencies for pilots to communicate with each other. There's also one obvious specification is what language do you use? And of course, it's not automatic for that to be English. It might be automatic for it to be Russian, but it, it has to be specified by mutual agreement with some element of reciprocity. Um, so uh, <laughs> the uh, interesting thing about this is the eternal warmonger, right? The the uh, the bellicose demiurge, John McCain, Walnuts McCain, the friend of the MIAs, so called, uh, but of course he's not. Uh, he says this is immoral. It amounts to a betrayal of the moderate terrorists that the U.S. has been backing against Assad. So, uh, according to the deal. Uh, but according to McCain about the deal, he says, what it means is that U.S. pilots will allow the Russian attack planes 
to take the lead while uh, Iranian-backed Syrian ground forces attack the moderate uh, terrorists. Well, this is what you get, Senator McCain, when you bet on terrorists and consort with terrorists. And we know you're Walnuts McCain, and you are the guy who cavorts with the kidnapper, with the cannibal, and with the caliph. And as you say to Kerry, right, John, you've met all those people. Well, uh, no. McCain says this is not only self-defeating and harmful to our national interests, it is immoral. These people, these wonderful moderate terrorists, that would include the cannibal and the kidnapper, uh, these people put their trust in the United States, believing that we would make good on our promises to help them succeed. Now we are breaking those promises in our haste to give Putin clearer skies from which to bomb our partners. Let's just point out once again, the elementary prerequisite for preventing the collapse of Syria into chaos and the worst terrorist base ever seen uh, in recent history. And, of course, uh, continuing millions upon millions of refugees heading for Europe and, and the rest of the world. The only way to avoid that is to work with the existing government, the legal government, the go government that has never ceased to function on a large part of Syrian territory. They're always showing us the territory of, of Syria. Show us the population. How much of the population is under uh, the protection of uh, Assad? And you'll see that it's uh, it's it's quite substantial. Um, we also have uh, these uh, you know all kinds of uh, you know whining about this, right? But it's it's simply true. Now, uh, Nicholas Harris, uh, Middle East Security Program at the Center for a New American Security. That's the Petraeus one. Uh, the signal it sends is that the United States recognizes that the number one priority of the Russian airstrikes to support the continuation of Assad is a fact on the ground that cannot be reversed. Yes, get that into your head. And it's essential. It's essential. Because if you have the collapse of the Assad government, the collapse of the Syrian state apparatus, then you can't fight ISIS any way, shape, or form. That is the ultimate absurdity of the Allen and Petraeus uh, position. So that's number one. And then we've also got uh, the idea that we're going to have some uh, we're going to have some uh, some talks, right? Uh, Washington, this is now uh, Wall Street Journal, October 21st. The United States and Russia will meet for their first face to face talks on Syria since Russian warplanes began flying combat missions there uh, uh, and introducing their own variation into the American-led anti-ISIS campaign, the phony war engineered by Allen, which has opened up this tremendous uh, flank, which Putin intelligently has ex uh, exploited. But if you're looking for a, somebody to blame for the defeat, blame Allen and Petraeus and that clique. Those guys always lose, right? This is a clique of defeated generals. They would, in, in France, they'd all be sent to Limoges, Limoges. Uh, that's what happens to defeated French uh, marshals. So Kerry of the State Department will meet Lavrov, as well as top diplomats from Saudi Arabia, that would be Joubert, and Turkey on Friday in Vienna as the Obama administration grasps for a way to salvage its Middle East agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's a public agenda, as we've been told, and then there's a private one, which is different. Uh, the meeting follows a visit to Moscow this week by Assad, and that was, of course, a big uh, turning point. Now, on the ground, let's just look at that. The city of Aleppo, it had been the largest, even bigger than Damascus, according to some accounts, pre uh, war, pre-invasion by these Saudi paid for jihadis sent in through through Turkey. Uh, that uh, column, which is now advancing towards uh, towards Aleppo in the north, uh, this has impacted the Homs area, the Hama area, that's sort of on the way towards uh, Aleppo, and that is now happening. So um, it's a question of defending what could you could call it the, the Mediterranean coast, what the media like to call the Alawite heartland, which goes from Latakia down to Banyas, down to Tartus. Happened to have visit this, visited these areas myself, 2011. 
Um, so these areas have to be protected. The Russian base, of course, near Latakia. Last week, we had a, a very interesting account, which you can read about also in the briefing uh, up at tarpley.net and other uh, locations. You can read about how uh, the uh, the uh, Russian air defense had been configured, right, this idea of a bubble and a zone of interdiction, at least potential interdiction if it came to something uh, nasty. So this is all going on. Um, things are changing that in the sense that, uh, well, as Putin says, the Syrian government has achieved significantly positive results against the various terrorist opposition forces. And this has been going on since September 30th. So we, we got more than three weeks. And again, the Russian sortie number per day is equal to what Allen and company were able to put together in a month or six weeks. So uh, it's uh, quite likely that the uh, military situation of the uh, terrorist rebels in general, and that would include Nusra al-Qaeda, but also ISIS uh, soon enough, that will become quite uh, critical. So I think, um, remember, what the U.S. says in public is one thing. This idea of a, a different agenda by Obama in the background is, is another thing. Now, this brings us to the big event of uh, today, uh, that is to say, the 22nd of October. And this is the long-awaited appearance by Madame Clinton in front of the Benghazi Pardon me, the Benghazi committee. She's something to sneeze at. Okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to Hillary Clinton and uh, the question of Petraeus and Carter Ham, uh, which is not coming up in front of this committee, but which is essential. Back in a minute. To ISIS Radio, just to remind everybody Rome, Italy, October 26th, Monday, uh, the No Guerra, No NATO conference in Via Cavour the Cavour Conference Center, Centro Convegni Cavour, and then on uh, October 31st, Halloween, and November 1st, all saints, I guess. Uh, Friedberg, Germany, near uh, Frankfurt, that is within the S-Bahn, I think. If you're in Frankfurt, you can get there very easily, or if you're in Mainz or Wiesbaden, I think you can also you can get over there. So I hope to see uh, old friends and new friends at both of these. We will uh, improvise uh, contact meetings for the Tax Wall Street Party United Front Against Austerity. Now, let's look at Hillary and her uh, appearance, much touted, right? Now, you have to remember the prelude to all of this is that uh, Hillary's got all her ducks in a row, thanks to the treachery of Bernie Sanders, who saved her in the Democratic debate as these other candidates, such as they were, were gearing up to make a big uh, gang tackle of Hillary. It was Bernie who broke that momentum and saved her from some kind of criticism about her uh, nefarious and in, uh, probably illegal practices of keeping a, a, a her own private uh, email. To, not, not the greatest issue, but uh, whatever it was, that was the issue. And Bernie uh, didn't care about the issue. He cared about being a border guard, a sheepdog a stalking horse, uh, a, a, a flank guard, whatever, a gatekeeper. That's uh, Bernie. Now, today, uh, Madame Clinton is up there uh, dealing with essentially a bunch of uh, quite crude, amateurish things coming from Trey Gaudi, Trey uh, Unscrupulous, Trey uh, Unprepared. Um, and his his big deal is, you know, let's look at all these emails, and they're actually deducing. They say, how come you had more emails about Libya in 2011 or 2012? This obviously not going uh, anywhere. Um, there are two sides to this now. Remember, Mrs. Clinton, of course, has the worst of motives, uh, to be sure. She's power hungry and uh, Wall Street uh, representative. And, of course, a warmonger, right? She's a neocon. She is always the biggest warmonger in the room because she has to be. If she's not the biggest warmonger, then from her warped feminist point of view, she says, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to be attacked as a weak woman unless I'm the biggest warmonger. Well, that is, once again, the precise clinical definition of weakness, that you're overcompensating for what you perceive to be your big uh, vulnerability. Benghazi was an October surprise. Why did it take place at, on September 11th, 2012? 